Good morning you lot, hope you're doing super well and it is another week and another video and today we're going to be talking about something that's going to improve your filmmaking. Now this is often overlooked by beginner filmmakers and a lot of advanced filmmakers I know so we're going to head outside into the beautiful sunny weather that has blessed us this morning and uh, we'll have a little chat. Now V&Ds come in so many different forms from manufacturers and there's cheap and cheerful and there's all the way through to quite expensive VND filters. But why do you need a VND filter? Now we all should have heard if we are doing filmmaking and you've done some research, you've probably heard of the 180 degree rule. Now this is where you are doubling your frame rate. So if you are shooting at 25 frames per second, then your shutter speed is going to need to be 50. Now this is going to help us keep that natural motion blur that our eyes are so used to seeing. If you just crank the shutter, you're going to get a really jarring moves between motion in your frame and that is going to make your brain just think what the hell's going on and it does look terrible. So that's why we want a VND. The sun is starting to come out and it's starting to hit straight into the frame. Whenever I do these recordings, the sun always starts to come out crazy. Anyway, let's get back on the walk. So the VND system from Swift is available in different iterations uh, and this gives you different options in the kit. I think there's a standard ND VND system and then you get a Swift system. I'm going to drop them on the screen so you guys can see the different kits. The base of the VND is pretty much the same. So you get the one to five stop ND and then there's a five to nine that you can just slide on the top, which I'll go through in a little bit when we get back into the studio. But basically there, they are like these kind of filters and they actually slide on the top of the filter. So it's not magnetic, it's just purely suction that is kind of holding it on. And I found that to be a lot stronger than the previous type of filter I was using where it was magnet. Now the magnet would just fall off and it was kind of a little bit annoying. I had dropped a few filters and actually broke a filter on a previous magnetic kit that I had. I'm just going to go back into the studio and walk back to the studio now and we'll get in there and we're going to have a look at this true colour issue. Is the filter skewing the colours in frame? I'm quite interested to know this because I haven't actually tested this properly yet. So we're going to get the white card out, test against that and have a look at what the shift is, if there is any. So let's go. Put this mist back on. back again. So one thing I wanted to jump on and talk about was the actual kit comes in this little box which is really really useful. It comes with a little carabiner clip so you can clip it on the side of your bag and it opens up and it just holds all the filters in here. So we've got the extra stop, we've got the extra mist filters in here. And I did show you what was in the kit earlier but one thing I wanted to highlight was a VND works by having two polarizers together and that's how you get the VND and that's sometimes where you get the X effect with other brands but not with this one you don't get the X effect with this but one thing Nissi have done that is really incredible is that they have designed a CPL filter which is a polarizer filter which actually goes on this kit so technically you have three polarizers together and I don't know how it works but it works just as a polarizer. So the polarizer is going to be really useful if you are shooting stuff like automotive, water, anything that you get a glare or through glass, it will take that reflection out. So a CPL filter is really essential in your filmmaking kit if you are doing those kind of things. And a lot of people don't think about that when they're shooting automotive. So you get a lot of glare off the cars and stuff like that. So if you are shooting stuff like that, this is gonna really heighten your level that you're gonna be producing. One test that I really wanted to do with this VND kit is the white test. Now, Nisi claimed that this is true color, so this is not gonna skew one way or the other. You're not gonna get a magenta shift and you're not gonna get a green shift, hopefully. So what we're gonna do is do some tests like this where we're gonna hold the white card up. This is with the ND filter on. 
fact, I'm going to take the mist filter off this as well. So this is without the mist filter, and this is the white card here. I'm just looking at the screen to make sure we've got this in. And then what I'm going to do is screw this off. It's going to blow out, so we're going to have to raise the shutter speed on this. So this is the card at 160 now without the VND, and that's the colour we're getting. Let's go and have a look at how these colours actually uh, match in camera. Let's go. I'm absolutely kind of surprised how good the colour is actually. A lot of VNDs I've previously used have had a really strong magenta shift on them. So when I looked at these closely, it's really hard to see if there is any shift. Weirdly, I kind of prefer the colours with the VND on. So I think it just goes to show, I've heard a lot of people saying there's a, there is a serious colour shift in the true colour Nissi VND, but I cannot see that at all. I'm really impressed with how the colours are rendering with this VND on and off. Let me know in the comments what VND you guys are using. Are you using the Nissi Swift system? Are you loving it? Or are you using another manufacturer and are you having issues with colour shift? I'd really love to chat about the VND situation. Anyway, my conclusions in this video are that VNDs are super essential to filmmaking. They will level up your game with your look of your videos. I think that's really good cost for this kit for considering what you get in there. I'm using the Nissi Swift kit actually with my commercial work and I do own the C5 matte box which I use on my bigger FX6 cinema camera. So I use all the mist filters in that as well. I think these are some of the nice nicest mist fillers I've actually used. They're not too harsh and that's why I love them so much and the build quality is insane. So like I say, drop some comments below, hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on another one very, very soon. Peace out guys. Ooh.